Standard 2, Developmental and Educational Programs for 3 to 5 Years. This standard outlines the purpose of the early childhood programs. Preschool should have a well-organized and inclusive program that fulfills the learning and developmental needs of children. These programs should develop children's language, their physical, social, emotional, cultural, and cognitive skills. The programs are also designed to prepare children for a transition into grade school. The interactions that children have with others, be it family members, teachers, and those around, will help to shape their personality and their own way of thinking. Therefore, Standard 2 will guide early childhood practitioners with practices that are appropriate and are in accordance with the 3 to 5 year old milestone. Why I choose this standard? There has been many feedbacks from the lower primary teachers that a large percentage of children are coming from preschools without the basic skills which means that they are not meeting the educational expectations as described by Milner and Goldsmith that would make them teachable. The first of every experience for a child is very important and since preschool may provide many first experiences, it is, it, it is prudent to be cautious with what is provided. There has been a noticeable shift from how children learn to what children should learn at preschool. Children's lives are shaping during this time and whatever impressions are created may lead to success later in life. Would that imply that many people believe that some impacts in children's lives are irreversible? The developmental and educational programs have to be intentional in providing stimulating learning experiences and opportunities for children to develop holistically. The intention is to encourage schools and teachers to use this standard to guide their planning and decision making as they monitor, observe, and create lessons and activities that would, that would engage children fully and support their development. Inappropriate practices. Having preschoolers engage in lengthy tracing activities is inappropriate since they are at the stage where they are now developing fine motor skills. According to Samuel Sun and Kaga, early childhood is about laying some foundations for children's overall development that may contribute towards lifelong learning. Children may view such activities as tasks and not fun, especially since there may be discomfort in their fingers and are subjected to sit for long periods. The children will participate in the activity, but they may have little or no understanding and recollection of, of what they have done. The use of random activity may not help in the physical and mental development. An appropriate practice is instead of subjecting the children to sit and trace so many numerals, which they may forget, is that the teacher may introduce one numeral per week and provide learning activities with the numeral to reinforce learning. Special needs comes in many forms. It may be physical or mental, temporary or permanent. Not meeting that need is inappropriate practice. According to Brooks, if a child has difficulties completing activities and displays inappropriate behavior, that child may be having learning disabilities. Likewise, a child may sustain injury to a limb that may require that child to use a wheelchair or a walker. Practitioners enter the classroom equipped with their curriculum and lesson plan with readiness to carry out the school's mandate and may fail to pay close attention to children who are having a hard time to keep up with the others. Practitioners' action may convey their thought of saying children's special needs are not their responsibility. Parents take their children to these centers with the expectation that the center will address the child's need too often children are enrolled because it may be unlawful to turn them away 
and then they are being neglected when they reach in the classroom. An appropriate practice for special needs is where developmental and educational program monitors each child and assesses their progress. Through monitoring and assessing, the practitioner is able to recognize learning abilities and disabilities and plan or make adjustments to lesson plans in an effort to meet the need of every child. For instance, the Bahamas is a country where there are many migrants and there is a possibility that you may encounter a child whose first language is not English. Children learn language naturally so their practitioners are advised to use a lot of la of the language that they want the children to learn by engaging them in play by being responsive using objects and things that the child like to engage him Laurie noted that flashcards is not as an effective method according to costi Cognitive abilities consist of divergent creative thinking where children have the ability to identify patterns or connection between situations that seem unrelated. Developmental preschools are described as play-based, child-centered, and child-oriented with a flexible curriculum. Children should be given an opportunity to construct and relate to things in the way they see it. Divergent thinking plays a critical role in developing creativity, cognitive and social skills since it allows children to engage in pretend play where children portray things in the way they see it. Children's progress may, may go unnoticed or under assessed when they are not allowed to reflect on and recall information in a manner that best suits them. We do not learn from experience. We learn from reflecting on experience, according to John Dewey. An appropriate practice is the emergent curriculum. Emerging curriculum is not a free-for-all. It requires that teachers actively seek out and chase the interests of the children. Bima reason that if that it is difficult to teach someone who does not want to learn or someone who does not believe he or she can learn. Children are more enthused when they are given opportunities to engage in activities that they like or topics that they can relate to. For example, a team on transportation. The teacher may ask students for their preferences, land, water, or air transportation. The child may be placed in groups in accord, according to their choice. Then they would engage in activities as they explore and learn about various types of transportation. It is an inappropriate practice when children are not allowed to express themselves using the language that they are comfortable with. Whenever a practitioner stops a child from speaking because the child did not use the stipulated language, it may cause that child to become withdrawn, thus minimizing the level of participation. The more a child is allowed to interact with others, the more confidence that child will develop and that may help to develop the child's language skills. According to the IRIS Center, parents of children who are asked to only speak English may have already experienced discrimination and may be fearful that their children may experience the same thing. An appropriate practice. Children who are allowed to express themselves using their mother language will feel valued and develop a positive self-identity as their linguistic culture is accepted. They are given an opportunity to learn a second language as the school helps them to use English. 
practitioners should use the appropriate language when communicating with children and never tell them they are wrong since children are at the stage where they will make language mistakes. Too much structure in a classroom is inappropriate since it robs children of essential time to play and the opportunity to develop important life skills. For example, practitioners may have learning activities for children to begin as soon as they enter the classrooms in the morning. Children are not allowed to indulge in free play before call time or during the day. Teachers usually engage them in activities that review past work or have students complete work from the previous day. Appropriate practice where lesson plans and activities are disguised as learning activities as play. Children are allowed in the drama and manipulative center if they so desire. For example, a teacher would not restrict a child who wants to play dress up and depicts a fireman during the free play period. Reeves opined that early childhood development cannot be rushed. Although many are pushing children towards academics when they should be engaged in more physical play which is more beneficial to them at this stage. He concluded that specific cognitive milestones are reached at a specific age and no matter how early children are introduced to, academ to academic activities, they may only be able to accomplish certain tasks whenever that milestone is reached. In conclusion, Inappropriate practices for young children create negative results. The most important component may be the respect for children and their characteristics. Thank you.